The title of the message today is The Spirit Who Reveals to Us. I want to first touch on a verse of scripture from the Old Testament. Paul references this uh, verse further in the scripture we'll be going through today. This comes from Isaiah 64, 4. It says, Since ancient times no one has heard, no ear has pierced, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. So we continue on today from the scripture we left off with the last time I was here on the same subject continued and gets a little more in depth. So this subject was cross, the cross of Jesus Christ. And that was, as it said in the previous scripture, to the Jews the stumbling block and for the Greeks foolishness. But to us, it is the power of God to our salvation, foolishness to the world. Think of the testimonies out there which can be given about the power of God and that it is not foolishness at all. Think about your testimony, your personal life, and your witness to Christ and how he came into your life and what he has done for you. Think about that testimony and about the power of God in your life. Think about God's testimony itself. And what is that testimony? We hear that in John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And it goes on to say, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. God's testimony to us and to the world. God, Jesus, God's Son, Jesus, died on the cross bearing the sins of the whole world. And God laid on Him the iniquities of us all. Our rebellious, rebelliousness in sin against the Creator. Those were laid on the Son of God, Jesus. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only ours, but the sins of the whole world. 1 John 2.2 2. So through him we might receive the gift of eternal life in fellowship with God. The simple message of salvation. That is our primary concern as we walk upon this earth. It is sharing the gospel message with other people. Saving, winning souls to Jesus. Don't be scared of the message of the cross crucified and sharing that. Because we see here Paul himself. Paul said, he said, I came to you in weakness for great fear and trembling, preaching the message. Even Paul had fear spreading the message, but God was with him. And Paul alludes to that. So it's okay to be scared when you share the word of God. Rely on the spirit in you. Rely on Jesus to comfort you in your work for him here for the kingdom. We all have faith and we each choose where to put it. So we either put our faith in human wisdom or we put it in the faith of God's power. So our scripture today comes from 1 Corinthians. If you want to follow along, this will be in chapter 2 and we'll take pick up where we left off on verse 6 and go through 16 to the end. So verse 6 says, we do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. So Paul here is speaking to the mature Christian. This wisdom, the wisdom of God, is understood by the mature Christian. As we saw earlier in this chapter, we're not talking about human wisdom, not wisdom of the world and of the leaders that are versed in this wisdom of the world, but the wisdom of God. So that wisdom of the world will be forgotten. That wisdom does not provide the answers. When you go down the path of human wisdom, you will end up continuing to ask questions that you do not have the answers for. The world would lead you to believe it is all-inclusive and it provides the answers, but it does not. So not worldly wisdom like evolution. Evolution doesn't answer the how. The Big Bang doesn't answer the how. Creation without a creator doesn't answer the how. 
So just think about kingdoms that have came and went. Kingdoms that are lost over time. There's kingdoms that we know nothing about because there's no documentation. So that wisdom is gone. Wisdom of kingdoms that we are familiar with. Wisdom of kingdoms like Lenin in Russia or uh, Hitler in Germany and so many more. Their wisdom of what they thought was human wisdom is gone now. But notice... The wisdom of God never goes away. It goes from generation to generation. The truth stays the same for each and every generation. The more we understand God's word and how his plan works, the more wisdom you gain. God's perfect plan is amazing. And to fully understand it, you must spend time in the world, in the word, in the spirit, letting the spirit discern that to you. No, we declare God's wisdom a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. So the wisdom we speak of is the mystery of God. Mystery in this context means a hidden purpose, the secret will of God, the secret counsels of God and his dealing with the righteous, which are hidden from the ungodly and wicked men, but plain to us who are godly in his sight through his son. We can see the mystery that was written in the Old Testament, and that is here, now, and visible, has been made known to us. Mystery that is now revealed. God's wisdom, which is Jesus Christ. His plan that was previously hidden, that was planned before our creation, planned before the creation of time. The mystery was made known to us. Those who will look at it and look for it and turn to God. He made it for our ultimate glory before the world began. For our glory, glory here, the glorious condition of the blessedness into which is appointed and promised that true Christians shall enter after their Savior's return from heaven. So for our glory, our return back, from our fallen state, our rebellious, sinful nature. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. This mystery was and is not understood by the world. It is declared in the word of God. If they had known the word of God, they would have not crucified our Lord. People are still blind to the word and to the saving grace that lies within. However, as it is written, no eye has seen what no ear has heard and what no human mind has conceived. The things God has perfect, prepared for those who love him. God knows the heart. He knows who loves him and he knows who's in opposition to him. There are people who refuse to accept the love and the truth. And this was evident to Jesus as he walked on the earth. John said, but Jesus would not tr entrust himself to them, for he knew all people. He did not need any testimony about mankind, for he knew what was in each person. He knows our hearts, each person's heart. Jesus himself said, but I know you. I know that you do not have the love for God in your heart. But to those who love him, we can see and hear the truth. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God, revealed to those who who love him, to me and you. How does it say? By his spirit. So the indwelling Holy Spirit within each believer is how. The spirit, it searches all things, knows the heart, even the deep things of God. The spirit will enlighten you to these things when you study in the spirit and study the word of God. God has revealed these marvelous things to us. Justification, redemption, Righteousness by faith, sanctification. These are things revealed to us by his spirit. For who knows a person's thoughts? 
except their own spirit within them. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. I don't know your thoughts. Only you know your thoughts because of your spirit, your consciousness of your own thoughts. We don't know each other's thoughts. You don't know my thoughts. It says here that in the same way, we don't know the thoughts of God. It gives us an exception, though. Only the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, as the, a believer with that indwelling Spirit, it lets us know the thoughts of God. It reveals to us His plan and His will in our lives. He has revealed the mystery to us because we have loved Him. That is why it is important to live each and every day, each and every moment in the Spirit, in the presence of God, in everything you do. The Spirit of God knows and understands God, knows God's will in your life. That we have received, what we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of God, or the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand that God has, what God has freely given us. First, we have the contrast here in Scripture between wisdom of the world and wisdom of God. Now we see a contrast between the spirit of this world and the spirit of God. So the spirit of the world is the spirit of rebellion against, the, against God and the things of God. We receive the spirit of God, not the spirit of the world. It is through the Holy Spirit that we gain what God has given us. His free gifts He's bestowed upon us. His love. His salvation through His Son. In John, in verses starting in chapter 14, we are told these things about the Spirit. It says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in My name, will teach, teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said. Peace I leave with you. My peace, that inward peace that he speaks of, that comfort in your soul that you receive, I give you, he says. I do not give you what the world gives you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. When you have him and have that peace, you can go to him in those times that you feel troubled or you feel afraid and he will comfort you. On in chapter 15 in John, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, but God who goes out from the Father. He will testify about me, and you also must testify. His command to us, testify about our faith, for you have been with me from the beginning. On in John, in six, chapter 16, he goes on to say, but very, very truly I tell you, it is good, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment about sin, because people do not believe in me about righteousness. Because I am going to the Father where you can no longer, you, you can see me no longer, and about judgment, because the prince of this world, Satan, now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can right now bear. But when he, that spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you, guides us, in all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come, the future. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine, Jesus says. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me, and he will make known to you. The Spirit. The Spirit, 
revelation of God's plan of salvation and redemption to man in each and every one of us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual, spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. God's wisdom, not human wisdom. God's wisdom is given through the Spirit, His Spirit, to those who will accept it, to those who will turn away from the spirit of the world, that spirit of rebellion, and see with the unveiled face the mystery of God. As for you, you were dead in your righteous transgressions and sin in which you used to live when you followed the way of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of the flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. Human desires, human's thoughts, human's wisdom, once in each, one, each and all of us. But because of his great love for us, God who rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Spirit taught words, God's power, God's wisdom. The person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. So people with veiled faces, those the prince of this world has blinded, cannot see the wisdom that comes from the Spirit. They see it as foolishness, controlled with the flesh and with the spirit of rebellion. The natural man cannot understand the things of God, God's mercy, God's love, God's justification, God's salvation, God's peace, having contentment in God, the joy of the serving the Lord, living in fellowship with Him. This is discernment only comes through the Spirit. The world cannot understand that. These gifts are spiritually discerned. You receive the Holy Spirit and you see these things. Your mind is open to God's truths. The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to mere human judgment. For who, was known, who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We don't know the mind of the Lord, but we see how he lived upon this earth. We have his word. We have his spirit living in us. Our judgment about all things need to be made in the spirit. Our decisions made in the spirit with the spirit's guidance. We are to have the mind of Christ, to be like Christ, to have his character, to have his obedience to have his perspective in all things. We are to have the mind of Christ following after our shepherd. If you'll all stand, we'll have a number. Page 123, I'll live in glory.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, you have revealed your mystery to us, the mystery of the cross and Christ crucified, the mystery of the coming glory. Be with us as we continue our walk on this earth, that we may hold on to your peace and guide us to share your message to those we encounter with our testimony and your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank <laughs> you.